Welcome to Electron Online. You may wonder, differential equations, who needs them? Why do they even exist? Is this just something to torture students with? Well, it turns out differential equations have a real purpose in the world. Here's an example of an electric circuit, a very simple circuit. We have a capacitor, we have an inductor, and we have a switch. And let's say that initially the capacitor is charged up, it has a certain amount of charge on the capacitor, and now we close the switch at time equals zero. At any point after that, we can sum up the voltages around the circuit across each of the components and they should add up to zero. So the sum of all the voltages around the circuit must be equal to zero. That is, of course, one of Kirchhoff's rules. We also know that the definition of capacitance, that it's the ratio of the charge on the capacitor divided by the voltage across the capacitor, or the voltage is equal to the ratio of the charge on the capacitor divided by the capacitance. So when we go around the circuit, we start at this point right here, we go around the circuit. Notice, once we close the circuit, the current will begin to flow from the positive end of the capacitor to the negative end of the capacitor through the inductor in that direction. So when we add up all the voltages, we come across here, we notice that this is the positive end and the negative end of the capacitor, so that's a voltage drop. So we have minus Q divided by C, which is the voltage across the capacitor at any point in time. The charge will be a function of time. Then we come across here. Now we go across the inductor against the current, so that's a voltage rise. It's plus the inductance times the change in the current divided by time. We get back to the same spot. That's equal to zero. So here we have a differential equation. Also note that I is equal to the negative change of the charge across the capacitor divided by time. Why do we know that? Because the capacitor is discharging, so therefore the current represents how fast the capacitor is discharging, which is a negative change in the charge over time. If we replace the di, if we replace i by minus dq dt, then this now becomes a second order differential equation. Where we have minus q over c equals the inductance times the rate of the, the second derivative of the change of the charge with respect to time. If we divide both sides by negative l, the differential equation now looks like that. And we know that the rate at which the, the charge goes back and forth, which is the oscillating frequency, is equal to 1 over the square root of L times C. So that's what we mean by differential equation. This equation tells us what the charge is in the circuit or across the capacitor at any point in time. And if you want to know how fast it oscillates, or if you want to know what the charge is at any point in time, we have to solve this differential equation. Here's another simple example. Here we have a mass that is sliding back and forth across the floor without any friction attached to a spring. The spring has spring constant k. And so now we extend the mass just out away from the equilibrium point at distance x, and now we let it go. We know that f equals ma, Newton's second law, and the force on the block based upon the spring, the spring will be pulling it this way when the, the, the block is extended to the right by distance x. So the force on the block is minus the spring constant times the distance x, and that should equal the mass times acceleration. And since we can write the acceleration as a second derivative of position with respect to time, we can write it like a second order differential equation. If we now move the minus kx to the other side, make it positive, and switch the equation around, it looks like this. And finally, when we divide both sides of the equation by an m, we can write the differential equation like this, where the ratio of k over m, if we take the square root of that, is equal to the oscillatory frequency of the mass based upon that spring. Again, the differential equation here describes the position as a function of time as a differential equation. And here, this differential equation tells us the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. So you can see, Differential equations are not just there to torture students, they actually have a real purpose, and since they're there with a real purpose, and if we want to know how to solve these types of problems, we have to learn how to solve these differential equations. So, stay tuned, and we'll teach you how to do that. Very systematically, one step at a time, starting with first order differential equations, and then moving on to second order differential equations. At least now you can see that there's a real reason why differential equations actually exist. And here's a couple of examples of them.